And joining me here on set is Caitlin Huey Burns. She's a CBSN political contributor and a national political reporter for Real Clear Politics. And joining us from Washington is Kelsey Snell. She's a congressional reporter for the Washington Post. Ladies, welcome to you both. Kelsey, let me begin with you. We'll get to the president's continued attacks on the media in a moment, but I want to start with health care. In talking to your sources on Capitol Hill, does it seem like this repeal-only option is starting to gain steam among Senate Republicans? No, I don't think it is. I think it's safe to say that there is a strong and vocal minority of people who want to do it this way. There's grave concerns, particularly among Republican leaders, that the idea of repeal and then waiting to replace could leave people without any certainty and could cause the markets to collapse even more quickly. And it could lead to a situation where the government has to prop up marketplaces in order to keep them running. That's simply just not what they want to do. And in fact, the president himself dismissed this idea back in January. And they it seems like it's kind of going back to square one here, and leaders just aren't willing to do that. Yeah, Caitlin, let me ask you. The president previously said that repealing and replacing Obamacare simultaneously was the thing to do. What are the mm -hmm. political implications of a repeal first, replace later approach? Mm -hmm, right. Well, you would have to deal with all of these consequences coming from taking something away from people. If you repeal uh, without uh, saying how you're going to replace some of these elements, I think that will certainly cause a lot of concern, not only among uh, Republican lawmakers, but Democrats as well, who are defending this law. Um, you also this also comes, of course, as we've seen the scores from the CBO analysis saying that 22 to 23 million people would be taken off, uh, would not have insurance uh, if this plan, the Senate plan were to go into effect. That speaks to kind of the consequences of this bill. I think it would be very hard for uh, some of these more moderate Republican lawmakers to sign on to something like this without tell being able to tell their constituents what they would be giving, giving them in terms of health care. And Kelsey, the other key legislative focus for Republicans right now is tax reform, and Axios is now reporting that White House chief strategist Steve Bannon is pushing for a tax hike on the wealthiest <laughs> Americans to pay for a steep tax cut for the middle class. What kind of support, if any, would that have among Republican lawmakers, Kelsey? Uh, virtually none, uh, <laughs> to, be, to be honest. I, it, that is not at all something that you hear Republicans of any kind talking about uh, in, on Capitol Hill. Uh, I covered tax policy for seven years before I came here to the Post, wow. and I can tell you that that is not in any way something that Republicans have spoken about. It's not been any version of tax reform they've ever discussed. It would be a large populist nod, and I think people you know, out in the country might see that as a really great idea, but it's just not something that's legislative feasible with this Congress. So, Kelsey, what do you think this is about then? Well, it, I mean, this is a really a great populist play. If you are somebody who is lower middle class and you hear that the president wants to raise taxes on the rich and give a tax cut to, you know, middle class and lower income people, that sounds really great. And, you know, Democrats themselves have been pushing for that for some time. Uh, but it's just not something that Republicans in Congress want to do. They think that the economy grows better when you cut taxes, particularly when you cut taxes on businesses. So it, it would be a very difficult sell politically politically, if not, you know, if it, even if it would be something that people out in the country would probably like. So, Caitlin, what do you think about that? I mean, tough sell politically on the Republican side, but mm -hmm. perhaps Democrats, some may find that appealing. I mean, it could be a way for Republicans to, or the White House to call the Democrats bluff here. Remember, Democrats have been uh, campaigning over the past couple of weeks to really uh, save the Obamacare law, right? Um, they are counting on these divisions within the Republican Party to derail the effort to repeal and replace it, uh, keeping Obamacare uh, in place. They've also been trying to make the argument that, hey, we're willing to work with people on the other side if they come and want to make fixes to this law. They've been particularly critical of uh, the tax component of the health care law, saying that uh, the Republican plan would uh, raise taxes or would would, would uh, take away, uh, would give tax cuts to the wealthy. So uh, this could be a way for uh, Bannon, if this is a serious effort, to kind of call the Democrats out on their willingness to work with Republicans as it pertains to tax reform, but as Kelsey mentioned, I can't imagine there being any appetite on the Hill yeah, for that. The key phrase, if this is a serious effort. Right. All right, Caitlin, let's turn to another topic here as the White House is hoping for some legislative wins. In the meantime, the president is continuing his war against the media. He tweeted out, as we mentioned, that video of the president uh, seemingly punching a CNN logo. And I wonder, strategically, Caitlin, mm -hmm. is there some kind of objective 
in tweeting this out and this kind of social media behavior? Well, the president, as he campaigned, campaigned against the media in a lot of ways. Um, he is used to operating in a political environment in which there is a kind of a competition, right? And now, as president, as it pertains to governing, he doesn't exactly have uh, an, an enemy of sorts, and he's certainly made the media a foil for him. And there is certainly support for that among his core base of supporters. Um, it. You talk to Republicans on Capitol Hill, however, and they want him to stop doing this kind of thing. My question with that, though, is is when is kind of the, the breaking point for them, right? You hear a lot from Republicans about how the president is distracting from their agenda um, and how he's not he's not being helpful to them, trying to get things like health care uh, passed. Um, they're also you know, arguing in some ways for him to use the bully pulpit for uh, a greater purpose in terms of helping to sell legislation across the country. Interestingly, he hasn't really done much of that. Uh, events that he's supposed to be talking about uh, legislation, he's been talking about the media. So this is representative of the president unable to uh, kind of not have an enemy, so to speak, and this kind of riles him up. Yeah, Kelsey, I'm curious what you're hearing both privately and publicly from particularly Republican lawmakers. You know, we do hear these very clear um, public statements of people wanting him to tone it down, but privately, they're even more upset about this. Mm. There are some senior Republican senators who I've spoken with who said that they just feel like they don't have a lifeline. They don't have somebody helping them sell policies that are difficult to begin with. And they just want a partner in the White House that is going to be part of the PR strategy. For a long time, they said that's exactly what they wanted from the White House, was to help sell this health care bill. They didn't want him to help out with writing the bill. They wanted him to help sell it. And he hasn't really done that very much, aside from, you know, going out with a message that's very different from what they want, which is to do repeal now, replace later. It's confusing and it's difficult. In the best circumstances, the White House and the, if they have the same party in control in the Senate, in the House, in the best circumstances, the idea would be that they work together as a team and that they create a cohesive strategy and a message. And that's just not happening here. Finally, Caitlin, as we look ahead to this week's G20 summit in Germany, what are the things that you are going to be watching for? Well, certainly the meeting that we're supposed to see between Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump, the president, will be, uh, you know, top of mind. Whether he asks, uh, whether he brings up Russian meddling in the election, according to various reports, he doesn't plan on doing so. He's planning to focus more so on Syria and other issues. Uh, that will be very interesting. This is the first time these two men are actually meeting face to face. These meetings, too, also come um, after the president uh, pulled the United States out of the climate change agreements, and that is something that will be very important to European leaders, wondering kind of how that kind of sets the stage here. But remember, there is also concern um, about this meeting with Vladimir Putin, what the president will actually say. Remember that Oval Office meeting that the president had with Russian officials uh, talking about classified information and the controversy that started um, and the pictures that we saw from that. So I think that's what people will be watching ahead of yeah, this trip. Pictures, by the way, that were not provided by the American media, exactly. but only the Russian side uh, was allowed exactly. into that meeting. All right, Caitlin mm -hmm. Huey-Burns and Kelsey Snell. Ladies, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.